I'm Ira Glass of This American Life. And let's begin these tales of fearless crime fighters with this story about a police officer in a suburban community somewhere on the East Coast. There was nothing, nothing going on. Saturday night in this village, really quiet, super cold. And this call came over for unknown animal in a house. And it was, about, it was on my post. It was about five minutes away. So I, myself and another car were assigned the call, and we show up there. And luckily for me, it was another guy who was pretty new. So we walk up to the door with all our stuff on, you know, the nylon coat, the vest, the belt, the whole, the whole nine yards. And mm-hmm. the door opens, and the guy who is behind the door, he's about 30. I was 23 at the time. He's about 30. He looks like a broker, a lawyer, just really well put together, nice guy, wearing glasses. He's wearing these, like, silk pajamas with a monogram, got my attention. Wow. And he's going, uh, listen, I'm really sorry to bother you. Normally, I'd handle this sort of stuff on my own, but uh, my wife really insists that I call. And so we ask him what the problem is. He says, well, we were having kind of a romantic evening down in the living room and we heard this scratching upstairs so I, I ran upstairs to see what it was and it turns out it's coming from the attic there's something up there and it's just running around knocking a few small things over I, I can't tell what it is it could be a squirrel or a raccoon I really don't know so the other cop that I was with said well you know we really don't handle that it's not so, so much a police function it's uh, you know but we do have numbers of these private contractors who'll come in and they'll put a humane trap down and they'll remove the animal for you and it's really not such a big deal, but it's really not our thing. So right as he was in the middle of, of saying that and getting us off the hook, the guy swings the door back, and there's his wife, who was just beautiful. She was beautiful. <laughs> she was probably about 26 or 27, but just really beautiful, like perfect skin, long blonde hair, great teeth, brilliant blue eyes, a really nice smile, just like beautiful and and friendly. You know, if she had said, you know, eat this broken glass, I just would have said, okay, broken glass, it is, that's fine. But she <laughs> she seemed really nice, so I was going to be like Galahad. <laughs> so I just threw my arm back into this guy's chest, into my partner's chest, and I said, Mark, we can handle this. <laughs> It'll be okay. And she just was just, you know, oh, thank you so much. And she was really sweet. And I was, like, struck dead. So we walk inside. And she goes, I'm going to throw a pot of coffee on. And we go upstairs. We follow the man of the house upstairs. And we're underneath one of those trap doors that goes into the attic with the staircase that folds out. Right. And we do hear an animal upstairs scratching away, just kind of scuttling around the floor. And there's definitely something up there. And it's making pretty good speed up going from one end of the roof to the other. So I reached up, and I took the trap door down, and we unfolded the ladder. And I have this big, heavy flashlight, you know, like your, your cop flashlight, the four D-cells, the metal case, the whole thing. Right. And I shine it up through the hole in there, and it's pretty black. I can see the rafters, but really nothing else around there. And I start up the ladder. Now, the, the guy who owned the house is standing almost directly underneath me, just to the side of the ladder, looking straight up at me. And my partner was at the, at the base of the ladder, right behind me. So just before I stuck my head through this like black hole, I just kind of paused. <laughs> like I, I crunched my body up underneath because I'm realizing, gee, you know, I don't know where this thing is. The second we pulled down the trap door, all noise upstairs just ceased. So I was kind of nervous. And I was like, well, you know, I, I look like an idiot just crouched up here on the top of the ladder. So I took the flashlight, and I just popped my head up, turned the light on again, and about six inches from the front of my face was this squirrel at eye level with me, kind of reared back on its legs. And I, I swear, from where I was standing, it looked like Godzilla. It just scared the <laughs> heck out of me. I thought, it's a squirrel. It's going to be hiding somewhere. It's going to be terrified of me. It was six inches away from me, and it really startled me. So I kind of went, ah, and jumped back. And the flashlight slips out of my hands, and it's heavy, and it falls directly onto the nose of the guy who's looking straight up at me. And I don't think it broke it, but it it did some damage, and his nose, (laughs) his hands went up to his face, blood just started pouring out between his hands. This is the homeowner. This is the homeowner. I lose my balance, 
and fall backwards directly onto my partner, and I just I pancake on my. We're both on our backs. He's on his back. I'm on his stomach on my back, scuttling around like a like a beetle trying to get up in this really narrow hallway. It's a mess. The squirrel, while we're floundering around in the hallway, jumps down the stairs, boink, 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 <laughs> lands on me, and takes off down the stairs. How undignified. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> so we're wondering, gee, where is the, where is the squirrel? And right at that second, the woman who lived there, you hear her scream. So my partner goes, well, you know, we found the squirrel. It's wherever she is. 